Hi, everybody. Um, I'm delighted to be here. Um, my name is William McElhenney. Um, I've accepted by default, or maybe because of my, my reputation. Um, I'm, I'm now known among schools in the Heritage and School Programme as the Seaweed Man. And uh, that's one I, I, it took me a while to accept him, but now I, I do because I've got lots of, lot of, lots of children calling me that. And um, I, I developed this um, company called Wild Strands, um, and it was based on um, my wife's um, heritage of harvesting seaweed. And this has gone back, we can go back four generations, um, but possibly a lot longer. Um, it's become fairly popular now, seaweed. Um, but how do we get it into sort of the vernacular of day to day and for people who, who may become reacquainted with this, with this food? So um, for a few years when I set up this company to develop sort of bespoke tourism events, um, it kind of went into a slide, and this is why I sort of have a wee bit of a privilege here of, um, of speaking to you, because uh, this co company probably would have ceased if I hadn't been nominated. Now, when I was nominated, I was delighted to get the award. It was an accolade that, really, I have to continue <coughs> this company. I have to continue my story, because my story before that was one of... Um, one which anybody afterwards can, can talk to me. But basically, I've come out of personal bankruptcy. I, I was known in the media for, for having a, a house. So therefore, this event came out of a group of men in a men's shed where I went into to clear my head. I built a boat. I was very lucky. I was very privileged. I got to work with two master craftsmen in Ireland. And both actually come from my town. One is Dolan McPoland. Initially, I worked and I have worked for years in environmental and ecology groups with a group called Celebrate Water. I worked with Donald McPoland and I built a Donegal Curra. From that there, in the men's shed, I went on it. And through tough times, when I was in this process of leaving the house, um, I was a, f a, foil a foil roar and a traditional foil punt um, that's, in the, that's in this picture here. This, the man on the right is Brian McDonald. I'm not quite sure. I think he's a sixth generation. Um, his story goes back to 1750. Um, the oldest clinker boat builders in the world is here in Ireland, is up in the show. So I then got the privilege of securing and building this boat because a couple of my friends says, come on, William, get your head up. And when we talked, the guy beside him, Hubert Doherty, um, actually can remember rowing these boats during the times of, of the salmon fishing. And then I suddenly realised around the making of this here foil punt, there was a few other guys talking about it. And then we got to talk about this other boat that I am very passionate about called a Dronton. A Dronton is a, book, is, a, is a boat that's related to a story that goes as far back as Norway. Really from the long boats, the Vikings. And this man, Brian McDonald, holds the key. The only, the only person actually in the world that knows how to build a special keel called a sandstroke. So when, we, when we're talking about a story, all of a sudden I'm in this here place. I've got these men around me. And they're soaked in heritage. The man on the left, Hubert Doherty, wants to pass fish with his son. And, he's got, and his son's got three sons. And he can't pass on that that tradition of salmon fishing, because drift net salmon fishing has ended. So what's going to end as well is the tradition of the boat building, which has begun around since 1750. So when I was there, I sort of went, and then the story started coming. Now, I remember um, growing up in Moville. I remember going down every day with my Uncle Jim. That's a bit of a quirk. It's a Donegal thing because he wasn't really my uncle, but that's another story. <laughs> but we went down to, to the pier every day just for the banter. Billy Farnett at a wee hut on, on, on the pier. And uh, we'd listen as the guys came off. So if they, if they caught two, or sometimes they, they would have caught over 100 at the time. 
But generally speaking, the stories would increase depending on who came in first. So therefore, there might be a bit of netting where, the, where there should have been salmon because the guys would want to say, don't let your man know that we only caught two today. So there was a good bit of banter, but they all looked after one another. So I start sort of going, and they says, go on, William, go on, you start organizing things. You're great at doing all these events. You've done loads of things for voluntary. Come on, let's, let's get going. And that's where really, um, I wanted to, to really sort of go, right, I'm going to go up and go on. And um, I devised this thing called, called Wild Strands with my good friend, Sebastian Furchie, as an artist. He was a former director of Wild Strands. He created my logo. And this is where I prove that none of you are sleeping. Up hands now to see how many things can you see in that logo. What can you see? Anybody? Huh? Camper fan, well done. Anything else? Knife and fork, well done. Who can see the knife and fork up hands? Yeah, you've all got it. Anything else? Huh? We've got the seaweed, great. Yeah, so we've got this idea of waves. What we've got up on the top of it, of the camper van, you'll see it now, it's by Leffen, um, during the Irish Open, you'll see it, it's a thing called Glashidi Rock, and that's to symbolise where I was out, where I was looking um, when I was collecting, when I was collecting um, the seaweed. And you also know the wheels, one is black and one is white, and that's all about balance. And that's what I want to say, that when we're getting into heritage now, this gave me great balance in my life. This brought me back to who I am. And this is what I want you all to remember when you are devising an event. To realise you can touch people in a way that you'll never understand. Because these men, and making me devise this here, they've basically given me a pedestal to say, get up, get going again. And with this accolade of this here award, it gives me the confidence now to keep going, to share my story to get out there, to go back in the media and, and to hopefully develop on. So I think balance, um, sorry, can I move this on? Balance is, is, a, is a huge thing. Now, and this here one, it says I am um, in slow adventure. So therefore, when I devise tourism, it's all about balance. It's all about nature. It's all about real stories. I'm very concerned about um, within the industries and within everybody else, Maybe, maybe, to put it simply, people being over clever. People trying to fabricate something of authenticity that becomes just a, a brand. Whatever you do, be true to yourselves, look to your own locality, and share just that story, because that is the story. So when I came up with that night, when I was there, when I got the idea, I got the idea from the men around the boat. I got the idea from Robert Kelly. I got the idea from Hubert. I talked to Brian. So then it was, then we realized within the community, this was something that brought people from all over. This brought people from Scotland. This brought people from all over Ireland up to the foil. Because it wasn't just for me to go down to the store and hear the stories about the salmon. It was for people to come back home. But the salmon put a real injection of money into the community. We are on the border. And there wasn't a lot of money. So the salmon literally, even in one season, could build a family's home. So when people came back, we suddenly realized, if we created an event, would we get people back? Would we get people to, to share their story? And then we suddenly realized, hold on here, we're going to have to narrow this down. We're going to have to make it just for the over 55s. We're going to have to cut them out because it's not going to work. So all of a sudden, before, when everybody starts going on about we need volume, suddenly, suddenly when it was real, and it was about real people wanting to share their story, their heritage, because a lot of their stories has been not undocumented. Again, we were saying we're on the border. So it was... Interesting fishing. <laughs> Interesting fishing because uh, there was bailiffs. And sometimes Irish people don't know the boundaries, <laughs> um, for want of a better word. 
So there was lots of colourful stories around how people fished. And we want to document that because, as I say, this isn't going to happen. But what I want to happen is, I want that tradition that's from 1750 to be kept on. And I start thinking, how? Moval had one of the oldest regattas I can remember when I was a young boy. I can remember when the town would be black with people. The regattas are gone. It's, a, it's an old formula. It's gone. But it, the regattas around, around Ireland was about fishermen. It was about how good they were in a boat. In fact, one person died in Moville during the regatta because they had overcompensated it. But um, possibly on, on the sailing, there was, and there was different regulations put on. But it was really the prowess of, of fishermen. So what I wanted to do then is sort of go, well, if we get this target grip, where can we go? It's a man shed. It's downstairs, upstairs. We can have a yarn. And then for me, what can we, what can we give as a carrot? Well, I can cook. I cook with seaweed. None of the fishermen will mind. So I cook very, very simple dishes. Simple dishes that are world class, that I would love to see in restaurants all around. Not, I, I lived in Italy. I love authentic Italians. My best friend, or one of my best friends, Sebastian Furci, um, was the director of this company. But authentic Italian cuisine in a small town of maybe 200 people in the west of Ireland, maybe an authentic Irish restaurant would be good. And when I did them their recipes, it was recipes from the town. So I had ended up being personally bankrupt. I had given up my house because of this structural problem. So I had nothing. What, I, what did I have? I had the community. So the cafe gave me the Delph. The local community gardens gave me all, all, all of the products that I needed. Friends of mine that had organic gardens gave me stuff. The man shed took the bill for any of the rest of the stuff. The fisherman came and gave all the fish. Suddenly I had a three course banquet there. And the numbers were rising. Social media, stay away. Everything else, stay away, because if anything comes on to the light, so no, no newspapers. This is word of mouth. This is old-fashioned, old-school guys came up. One guy came up with a mask, an oxygen mask, because he was so proud to say that he could hear his friends, that he the banter was 20 years late, earlier, that he was going to see them again. I actually found out that my father, who died over 40 years now, he had worked with him, and he told me stories about my dad that night. So it's that sharing of community. So when all of the men came in that night, I was going to document their stories. That was the most important thing. So a friend, a, a really fantastic photographer and video, Harry Kerr from Memory Factory, he says he would do it. He recognized how special it is. He took that picture on the first frame of, of um, Brian McDonald and, um, and Hubert Doherty. So when he says he would document it, I told the stories. But just in case I didn't know my place, who was organizing this event, when I stood up and when I says, he's all know me lads. I'm William McElhenney, I'm here. It's been videoed. But I, I want you to tell your stories, to share and an all of your, your family's history of, of salmon fishing in the area. I didn't get too long talking, because one, one guy and, uh, just sitting beside me, who's got his wee fisherman's hat on, Frank the Post, we've all got nicknames up around our area, he says, but sir, if I was to tell just my stories, he says, we'd all need sleeping bags. And he started from 1940 going, this boat, this boat, this boat, this boat, this boat, this boat. He says, so we might as well go home then. And then one guy says, uh, you forgot the St. Mary. And I says, I'll leave it to you, lads. I had another guy there. He emceed the night, and I went downstairs, and I recorded that event. So the big thing important is, is how do we engage? It wasn't my place to talk to the fishermen. It was up to a fisherman to talk to the fisherman. So I knew my place, and I went down and documented it. So the delivery of the event, when I came up, I handed out the food, and we continued on the stories. And a couple of guys bought out a few Bottles, bottles, or bottles of whiskey, 
Uh, maybe I shouldn't say this because the men shed there's no drink, but <laughs> maybe there was dilute in the bottle, shall we say. So in doing that there, I can't thank my community enough. Because when I, when I was there that night, I was really proud because 60 people came. And I could have filled that three times over. So they were almost invited guests, whereby we went round people's houses, especially Robert Kelly and Hubert Doherty, and chatted to them. So this was going on for months beforehand. So for everybody here that is thinking of, of running a heritage event for next week, get out into people's houses. Hear their stories. Talk to the people. Be proud of what they say. Don't try and elaborate. That is your story. That is the heritage of the area. So just... So this is me. This is the one thing that I, I as a chef, um, have, to, um, have to come to terms with. This is me taking out, um, it was a rhubarb crumble done with kelp. Um, and it came out of the stove, out of the, out of the oven. It was really interesting trying to bake um, the two bits of bread that I cooked two, two, two fires later on because I had to switch them midway because the temperatures couldn't stay between one another. And it was really interesting because all of the men in the men's shed were around organizing the event for that event. So when there is obstacles in the way, get on with it. Get on with it. And everybody will love you more for it. Everybody will, will dig their hands in once you've created that story, once you create that buzz. So all that day, people was coming in and there's only a list of some of the people that helped me in my community. Um, and just to, to finish up, I want for all of you to realize that one of the most important things when you're doing a community event is to value the people that you're telling the story about. Because usually, as in this here one, it's sort of like a living heritage. And when I'm saying living heritage, I get to thank again the Heritage Council because now I helped, I collaborated, but this time um, the, the, the men shed in Moville have secured um, the restoration of a ferry that went from the south. And this, this is the part you really need to focus on, which is, and any shown, we're in the northern part of Ireland. But along the foil, so that's the south. So are we in the north or are we in the south? I still don't. And that's where we blur the border and the foil. But what I just want to say is a big thank you to my family, who are, who are the main people, my two daughters. They're always in the background. And I just want to say a special thanks to, to Relchin and to Neve, who are there tidying up, cleaning up, making sure all of the accessories and all of the things that I've prepared, because I am very scatty that they will bring them all there and they will tick all the boxes. But I just want to say, for anybody that's thinking of doing a community event this year, enjoy it, because you don't know how much it means to some people. So I just want to give a special thanks to the Heritage Council for giving me this award, which means I can start again. I can have the confidence to put my head up. So thank you. <laughs>